Hallo und herzlich willkommen. A big warm welcome to DocFest at Home. This is the very special Corona edition of the International Documentary Film Festival in Munich. And this film we are going to talk about now is nominated for our main competition for the Victor uh, Doc Film International and also, of course, for the Audience Award. And you are the audience uh, jury members. You are all invited to vote for those films after the stream. Uh, you can give your digital applause for the film. And this Audience Award is called the Kino Kino Publikumspreis and is donated by BR, BR and Dreisat. And I would love to welcome Margaret Olin in Norway, and she is producer and co-director of The Self-Portrait, and I hope you're doing fine. How is the situation with corona, the virus? How are you doing? Thank you, I'm fine. <laughs> and nice to speak to you. Uh, it's good to see other faces. We have <laughs> been <laughs> staying at home for uh, yeah several weeks now. Uh, home office, uh, my daughter, she's not at school, uh, homeschooling, but um, we're well and everything is fine. So yeah, just have to be patient for things to normalize, but um, we're good. So we of course want to talk about the film, The Self-Portrait, about uh, Lene Marie Fossen. And um, it's a special situation with uh, the directing team, because you are, you have co-directed the film with Katja Hoxett and Espen Wallin. And Espen Wallin is a photographer. So is this the connection, how you uh, decided to make a film about Lene Marie? Yes, um, the project started with Espen. Uh, he became a friend of Lene Maria mm -hmm. and he started to film her, uh, following her, her for a couple of years. And then he came to me, he needed a producer and a director. Uh, and I went into the project. He presented me for uh, to her fo photos, and I was very like uh, taken and moved by her work. And said to Espen that we can tell her story for the big screen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then I decided to apply for funding uh, in my company, Speranza Film, because I also produce films. And we invited Katja uh, to join in on the, to be one of three directors. And that was, I have been working with Katja on another project, uh, a film about inmates that was very psychic ill. And it felt like, She's a young, talented documentary filmmaker, and I'm like one of the old ladies in this business. <laughs> so it felt good to bring her along with this project as, as well. Um, but also because Lena has been uh, very ill for so many years that there are a lot of like ethical questions. And um, because of my private and personal life, it was also good to include her in this mm -hmm. so and Espen kept on filming so that's why we have like three directors on this film what was your first impression of Lene Marie as a, as a person when you met her for the first time mm. you know when you speak to her um, on the phone she's this wise talented uh, young artist uh, She's a kind of dreamer, but she has a lot of knowledge about art, but she's like self-taught. Um, mm -hmm. And when you meet her, she, she looked like a 12-year-old girl. So it was this gap between when you hear someone's voice and how you picture them and meeting her. But she was this humble person, that she was um, a very kind person um, and stubborn as well. Uh, she really knew what she wanted in life uh, mm -hmm. with her art and stuff. But um, to meet Lena was to like meet an artist uh, with all, all it is to be like a very sensitive person um, 
and she was that and her disease also has to do with that i think mm. and and of course the way uh, her appearance that she was so thin um yeah it's so on so many levels uh, the first meeting with her um so it's in a way hard to explain but what i really felt that was that we had this connection and i knew that i could tell her story um, some people you meet you think that you are not the right uh, person to tell their story but with lena i knew that i could do it you mentioned ethical questions uh, in your answer before um, I was wondering about that because your film is so beautiful and also Lena's art is so beautiful but at the same time there's this unspeakable pain that she went through basically her whole life um, how did you how did you handle that hmm. yeah you know when we started out making this documentary, I thought that we were making the film about her. I knew that she wasn't going to be well, like you can see that she had this story being uh, fighting anorexia for 20 years. But I thought that we were going to make a film about her uh, getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, but at one point, I knew that that was not going to happen. But the ethical questions, of course, it was very important that she saw the film in the editing, during the editing process, and made her comments. Um, and she died uh, 22nd of October last year. And she also managed to see the film when it was totally finished with the sound and the music and grading and everything and she was very touched by the film and happy with it and she also asked me uh, the last week that because we had planned that the film should be released in Norway at the cinemas uh, on the 17th of January this year uh, that we if we could uh, stick to the plan and it was hard, I knew it would be hard to like travel around in Norway presenting this film and talking about her so shortly after she had died. But I promised her because she was afraid that if we closed everything down and the festivals that were coming that it wouldn't happen, the things that she wanted uh, for her art and with the film. Mm. But in the process, it was also very important that her health and she as a person was number one and the film second, meaning that we should not uh, interfere in the treatment or act in a way that uh, it uh, would be problematic for her. So that meant that uh, for months we stopped filming and like uh, stepped back, even though I almost talk to her every day or SMS or emailing. Um, yeah, the process was that uh, her health was the most important uh, and that she kept in contact with the healthcare system and her psychiatrist and yeah. So you know, you have to maneuver um, when someone is suffering from severe anorexia um, or being psychic ill in a way that life is always number one and art is second. Mm. Mm. I mean, the film, of course, touches this century old myth or the question of the, like, the tortured artist, you know, and um, you talk about that and she talks about it. Um, and uh, Morten Krofgold, I think that's how you pronounce him, um, the famous photographer, um, he also talks about it and he talks about the black sun, I think that's what, how he, he calls it, in, inside of her that um, makes her a creative person while at the same time is, you know, you know killing her. Mm -hmm. um, have you found um, like an answer to that for yourself? Um, is that true that, you know, that 
great art basically comes from such great suffering, what she went through? Mm. No, uh, yes and no. I think that uh, in many cases in the history of art, you can see that, that great artists have, this, um, have, have been suffering in their lives, and, but they have the, uh, the gift of expressing what they go through. But no one in this world is spared of grief or sorrow or difficult situation that we come into and grow into. And, uh, but what an artist uh, have the talent to express these uh, big changes and events of life that runs through every human being, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is the gift, and for me, the, the gift of uh, creation, creating, that has to do with light, <laughs> with, uh, with, not with the black sun, but with the, the bright, uh, uh, strong white or yellow sun. Yeah. And um, I think that what kept her alive for so long uh, was the opposite of suffering. It was um, her connection with hope, with um, the, uh, the meaning and um, uh, you know, what art can be in our lives. I think in the opening of the film, she, she tells us that when she was a child, she wanted to stop time. She didn't want to grow up. Uh, she was uh, a lot frightened. Um, and being an adult was frightening for her. Um, and then she stopped eating and she was 10 years old to stop time. Uh, but when she was 14, 15, her parents gave her a camera and she started to take the photos. And then she experienced that she can stop time, but she can do it by capturing glimpses of what life is all about. That is also why I make movies and maybe why you have <laughs> your work, that we are able to do that with film or with still photography. And uh, for her, that was a way of, of coping with life. And so back to your question, I think that, um, artistry or um, you have to be brave. You have to go into darkness if you experience darkness, but not only for your own good, not only for because it can be a therapy in your own life, but because you are connected to other people. So by doing that, you can release something uh, for, for more people. And yeah. she had that gift. When you see one of her photos, it is not about her body. It is also, of course, about her body, but it is so much bigger, the picture, that what she is opening up for us. Mm. Can you tell me about um, how it was to shoot with her? Because I felt one of the scenes, or the scenes that I found so touching was when, when she was with her mother, for example, when you see how normal life for them is, you know, her, her arts, but also her, of course, her disease are such a part of this family. But uh, when they are in Greece and she gets irritable about her mother and sends her away uh, because she wants to do her arts and she doesn't want her mother around. What was it like shooting with her? I mean, when she's doing art and she has a film crew accompanying her, um, was that always very peaceful and very quiet? And or was it also <laughs> problematic at times? Yeah, she, she was. She was very strict, you know. She said that at this hour to this hour, then you can film it. But before that and after that, I have to do work only me and her camera. Mm -hmm. uh, but she, she was very happy uh, after a while to include her mother and also her father. And that this is also like a portrait of a family. They have been supporting her all the time. 
um, so so it was um, I think it, it it was not a problem to make this film, uh, but it 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 could be challenging. Like she had she had to eat at certain hours, um, and that was um, uh, yeah something that we of course <laughs> this is my cat jumping <laughs> from the camera. Yeah. His name is Igor. Yeah. yeah our first yeah. festival cat. Yes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She had her routines every day at the same time. Uh, when she did her, uh, took her medicine, when she was eating, and we didn't film that. And I did not challenge her on this because I think that in a life like hers, something should be kept in between her and her therapist and something had yeah. to do with us and the filming. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had like uh, quite clear, um, uh, we had spoken about all this, what we were supposed to film and what we, um, what we shouldn't go into. Yes. Mm -hmm. So no, it, it, it was more like in, at times that she wanted us to be with her every day that she was missing us. <laughs> like, can you, can you please come now? Can you please come now? Uh, and, um, mm -hmm. and we can't be with her every day. We don't have that budget, you know, but, but we did speak on the phone all the time. Mm -hmm. I have one last question. And I mean, you finished the film um, and there was some hope in the film, of course, that um, she probably might somehow, you know, I don't know, get better or live some more years. And, and then she passed away. Um, how did that affect your, your view on that film? I mean, when you look back now, now that she's dead, now that she died like six months ago, that must affect your emotions when it comes to that film, of course. Hmm. Yes. Um, when the three of us, Katja, Aspen and me gave the first interview, um, about the film, uh, I started to cry and I was, oh, I have not, um, and I've been doing many films, but it is, doing this film is life changing in a way. Because when you do documentaries, I've been doing films about refugee children, uh, um, drug addiction, uh, inmates, people that have like hard lives. Yeah. And you know that when you make a film that you, you, you cannot go into this to like save that her or his life. It is not about that. It is to a bigger cause. Um, but with Leanne, um, it was really hard because it was not that... Um, her life was at stake. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think that after this film, I will do maybe, if um, I have the opportunity, maybe work with fiction films for a while. Because her life and her art and all we discussed and her leaving us, <laughs> uh, it it has, I, ha, I have to spend time, uh, work through that. Mm -hmm. Processing uh, it. Yes, yes, it is. Um, she was a friend also. Yeah. And I think that when people watch this movie, they will never forget her. No. No. And I will never forget her. And it's not like I just can jump into another documentary project now and like, let her stay behind. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it feels like she's still here in a way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would... I'm very, very happy that we uh, made the decision with when Aspen came that yes, we're going to make this film because now she she's there forever. She's there, uh, and her art is more known because of the film mm -hmm. and. Um, the reviews uh, when the film had uh, premiered, when it premiered in Norway, they were great. And 
um, what people have told us is that they now understand the disease in another way than yeah. they did before. And I think that, yeah, she's good with her camera, but she is also very good telling about how she experiences anorexia. And she gives us these inner images so that we can really understand what it is to live with and through and in her life that she couldn't uh, manage to get out um, it's like a burning house and you can't find the door out for example that she has this uh, gift also um, mm. to speak mm. so i would love to say thank you very much margaret thank you for talking to me and thank you for bringing us this of course very very beautiful and very special portrait um, of Lene marie fossen so thank you very much and um, say hi to, of course, all your crew and all your team. And uh, I would love to welcome you all to watch this very, very beautiful, very moving uh, film, The Self-Portrait at uh, Dogfest at home.